Hey, Ecclesia, I got really exciting news for you. There are a lot of us sometimes we wonder, like, all the things that happen here, is, is there a plan? We were reminded, I'm here in Cucuta, Colombia. Ramon reminded me when I made a trip here by myself that it was kind of a spontaneous trip. There was this grandmother that said, there'll be no hayacas, no tamales for Christmas, and it got in my heart. And I was like, we have to come back and make sure they have tamales. And some things happen pretty spontaneously. But what I want you to know is that even those things are rooted in some really core beliefs about who we are. And in fact, we've learned a lot about that over the last few years. We invited a bunch of our leaders to come together for a thing we called appreciative inquiry. We got to tell stories about what makes Ecclesia unique and who we are. And out of that, we've developed a continuing and ongoing strategic plan. Ramon is our fearless Puerto Rican leader, and I'm telling you, he's been able to pull together some things from Appreciative Inquiry, some things the staff have been talking about, and we've developed together with all of them a strategic plan. And we wanted to share with you in this podcast a little bit of the conversation around these drivers, the things that we think make Ecclesia unique, and the things that we see in the future that are opportunities. Uh, they're going to drive where our finances go and where our staff efforts go. And, what it looks like to be a part of, we think, a church that's really transformational in the world. So I couldn't be more excited for you to be a part of this conversation. Uh, our staff at first were like, okay, cool, well, let's talk about our strategic plan. But what you hear now is that constantly they're referring to these drivers that, that inform our plan and what we do. And we're, they're asking important questions about, does this accomplish what we wanted to accomplish? And so I think by you being a part of that conversation, we're better off. You're going to love this podcast. There's going to be a lot of great information. We want to continue this conversation, and we're really hopeful. As we get to thrive in our 25th year, I feel really old. I can't believe I've gotten to serve this church now for 25 years. I think our future, our best days are ahead of us. And I think as you engage this strategic plan and some of the things that have led us here, I think you're going to agree. So I want to invite you into it. I'm really grateful for you. I love you and the gifts that you bring to the church and to the world. Okay, so I'm really excited. I just want to start by saying thank you to both of you for being here for this conversation. Uh, something that's really cool. So to start off, why don't we take some time and just introduce ourselves? Uh, so I'll start with you. Uh, tell me your name, tell me how long you've been a part of Ecclesia, and tell me what you understand your role is here. Uh, my name is Alexandra, and I have been at Ecclesia for four and a half years now. Um, started just coming when we moved to Houston, and then um, saw a job opening and joined staff. So I've been on staff for just over four years. Yeah. Um, and at Ecclesia, I've had a lot of different hats, but the one I wear currently is, I think, m centers around connecting people to community and figuring out how to do that. Um, help our staff do that and help our community do that. Love it. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll kick it to you. So yeah. tell us. Yeah. Um, Ramon, I'm from Puerto Rico. You didn't ask me that, but I like throwing that in there every time. I like how you um, roll the R's too. That's Puerto great. Rico. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've been on, I've been a part of Ecclesia for about 12 years now. Um, and I've been on staff for the last uh, five and a half years. Um, so, and uh, currently I, I'm the executive pastor, in which uh, I say jokingly, it's code for can't preach uh, <laughs> or can lead meetings. So I lead a lot of meetings around here, um, mostly, yeah, overseeing strategy. I want to say care for staff strategy and get things kind of done. So, yeah, cool. Well, and I'll kind of introduce myself. So I'm Wayne. Hey, nice to meet you guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Emily, my wife, Emily, we've been apart since 2008. So coming up on 16 years that it feels like we've been a part of Ecclesia, which is wild. Uh, I always tell people it's my third time on paid staff. So, uh, and this time around, I'm coming up on six, it'll be six years this year, actually, Thanks. that I've been in position at, as campus pastor over on the West side. So it's the longest of the 10 years, you know, like uh, we'll just call it the victory lap and it's like sticking, you know, really grateful for that. We'll take it. Yeah. Um, but I also know that like what I do um, doesn't look like a typical t campus pastor in a lot of uh, multi-site churches. So I think I lean a little bit more on some of the executive kind of things like you do. Um, and it's just fun to work with both of you. And part of why we're having this conversation 
is we have done something this year that we have given already to our staff and started to walk through with the other staff. And we spent lots of hours working on this, crafting this, meetings, talking, debating, all kinds of things. But something I've never seen us do in 15 years that I've been here, uh, which I think is super cool. So what we want to do is talk a little bit about a strategic report. Uh, so maybe just start uh, with, and maybe we'll go with you first. Like, sure. hey, what what is the strategic port report? What have we created? What do, what do we have? Yeah, um, it's. I'll, I'll give a little bit of context, and I'll start with segue with a brief story. So we hosted a parent route table not long ago, and we had somebody in one of the tables um, saying like, I, she was excited about the thing. I think I wasn't at the table, so I'm hoping I'm quoting this right. Um, she was at the table and she was saying like, she was pretty excited to be at that round table because she felt like this was a continuation of something that started a few years ago um, on what was like a big room conversation with a lot of people in our church uh, that was called the Appreciative Inquiry, um, which in a nutshell, it's like getting a lot of feedback from our community. So we did some interviews. We gathered in a room with about 80 or 90 Ecclesians, including all of our staff. We were there for two days. And we went back and forth trying to discern, like, what is the season that we are in in the life of Ecclesia? In that point in time, we're going through COVID, kind of like at the latter part of, of COVID. And like a lot of churches out there just trying to figure out, like, <laughs> what is happening in the world? What is our response to what is happening in the world? So... So from there, we embarked in that journey of like, kind of like self-knowledge of like, what are we about? What are the things that um, are unique about our community? And from there, the things that we appreciate and value from our community, what are the strategic elements that we could put in, in, in play? So it feels like, as she was saying, um, that person was saying in that table, like this feels like it's something that started three years ago from what you could, hold, what you could call kind of like a town hall kind of community broad conversation that in a way I call it like it's an invitation from us to to God. I was like, God, what are what have you called who have you called us to be and what are the things that you have called us to do in the upcoming season? Um, so that took us to like a lot of conversations, a lot of prayer, and trying to jot down was like what are we about and what how can we best use the resources that God has entrusted us um, in order to best serve in our community locally and, and globally. So that gives us a little bit more of you in the backstory of how we got here. Uh, and I may kick similar question to yeah. you because I'd love to hear like in your words, when you look at the strategic report, what we've created, like how would you describe it? What is it? What have, what have we done? What have we created? Yeah, I think kind of going back to the appreciative inquiry as a catalyst for that, for me, what I really loved about that is that we focused on what are like, who are we and what, what are we about? But like, what are our strengths? What are people's like core positive memories about being a part of this community? What are their dreams for how we can continue to do that better? Yeah. And so for me, I think this report is a lot of aligning and refocusing on like, who is it when we're at our best and how can we focus on doing more of that moving forward? Yeah. Yeah. And to me, it feels like we're trying to exactly that align our staff, align our community, our leaders, people that are really invested in a huge critical part. How do we make sure we're all headed in the same direction and doing what we do best? So, yeah. And it means, you, I feel like I can feel it. You want to say something? Yeah, I, will, jump I, in. I yeah. will say that uh, to your point, like it's something we haven't done before. Um, but in a way, having been now 25 years of Ecclesia as a community, there are some, some things that became really clear to us, like these are the things that are kind of unique to our community. And if I can quote some of them, like people talking about the, com the community and connections and the diversity and the hospitality uh, and the authenticity and the way we do outreach, again, in a local and in a global context, were some of the highlights that came to be that weren't necessarily kind of like, oh, we didn't see that. It was more of a... Uh, affirmation of like, yes, that is why I'm a part of this community. How do I take elements from that? Or, 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 or we can even be more strategic in the ways in which we can foster around our hospitality and diversity and all of that. So like that's some of the context and some of the things that we found in that process that we were kind of like, okay, what if we were even more intentional yeah. in some of those elements? Uh, I wonder what some of the uh, outcomes from that could be. Yeah, I feel like we've always been had a really strong culture and a really strong ethos and we're 
really clear about who do we align with, who can, who can align with us, who can run with us. But I don't know that we've necessarily done the best job of naming, oh, this is why, or this is where we're headed. It's, it's more been like, there's a vibe about Ecclesia. <laughs> and so, uh, and the vibe's good, I would say, but it's the, I love the idea of like, how do we make that more clear and more intentional and easier for people to, to jump in and join along? So I think we talked a little bit about how we came up with it, but I'd love to hear, um, there, there's always, when you put this amount of effort into something and you're trying to get everybody on the same page, there's also some tension and there's also some like, Hey, what if this backfires or like, you know, have we done this right? So I'm curious for you, uh, and maybe we'll start with you, Ramon, uh, like where do you see or feel some tension around this or where is there maybe something that's like, Oh, like, um, the, I'll answer some of them and I'll love to hear Alexander's take on some of the tensions that ignited, like, okay, how do we best leverage? But uh, for, for me, um, talking about leveraging, it's, it's it, the resources that we've been entrusted, and that includes staff, that includes people who've joined this community, that includes that we've been entrusted three buildings that are debt-free. Um, and it just creates a sense of responsibility yeah. of like, uh, are we fully taking like this to the best of its use? Because if God entrusted us with it, you could probably go to the talent, like parable of the talents. And like, are we like, are, are we being the one who's like multiplying the effect of, of this? So, um, Again, COVID is a, like was a good like kind of reset reminder that to some extent it makes you wonder, ask you questions. Um, so then you're you're kind of scanning like what are the, what's the inventory that we got here from resources to like ethos and culture. It's like I, in my role, I feel like and just kind of the way I'm wired and what I what do I feel God has invited me into to bring to the table, I'm kind of like, are we, are we making the best out of this? Yeah. Are we looking at the people who joined this community and inviting them and being good guides into what God is inviting them into their life, into their spiritual journey, into their servant journey? Um, so that, it's the, while I sleep well at night, it, it is something that kind of like keeps you, keeps my wheels turning. Like, are we being the best stewards of the resources that God has entrusted us. So from the appreciative inquiry that now we've named um, to looking through COVID and where we're at now, it's a lot of the context that lead us to like, can, can we be intentional about some things so that we can ease that tension? That I don't think will ever go away because I think the opportunities are always going to be way more than the resources that we will ever have. Yeah. We'll, we kid around here, the staff, like it's never a lack of ideas problem. We always have... A lot of ideas. Some of them are even good. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, so um, I, I do feel like we as a staff feel that tension of like, are we, are we, am I doing my job? Are we using the resources? Are we using the buildings to the best um, of the abilities uh, that we can? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, as we seek to serve people, which I think leads to another piece of like that tension, like what is, what are we trying to do here? And like. We talked about like Alexandra sits at the connect table. You sit at the connect table. It's like, okay, what do we hear from people that invites us of like, okay, there are people coming to our community and there are resources that we've been entrusted. There has to be a connect point here somewhere. So like yeah. there's that tension on the resources. And I think there's that tension on how do we answer to, to people who are coming to us with questions and with desire to like lean in. Yeah. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on some of that. Yeah, I think the, the tension... The, uh, that comes to mind for me is like, yeah, we have, we have all these resources. And I think there have been a couple of community members, especially through even back to the appreciative inquiry process who felt like we're the, their experience of Ecclesia has been, we're really good resources, uh, really good stewards of financial resources and doing things to care for people around the world, but that they hadn't necessarily felt that care or have felt that as a part of being a part of this community. And so that, some of those stories really stuck with me even over the last couple years. And so for me, I think that's a tension that I feel is like, how do we do what we do well, but still care for the people around the world, but also locally who are coming weekly in our community. And so I think that's a tension that I feel like, how can we, how can we best care for those people too? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like how can we help them get connected to each other? Like that's, I think something that, yeah, comes to mind consistently for me. Totally. I'm curious about you, Wayne. Like, what is the tension that you well, feel or notice? I mean, when he says responsibility yeah. and mentions parable of the talent, like that, 
that resonates deeply with me, which is also interesting that when you said like, oh, I preached on Matthew 25 at the women's retreat, oh. I was like, oh, what part, you know? So, um, yeah, like having this sense of like, I want to, I want to do something mm -hmm. with everything that God's given me personally, but I think collectively too, let's, let's not just bury something in the ground or just sit on it or even just get half of what we could out of it. Like, how do we actually get everything out of everything that God's given us. And so there is that sense of responsibility. I think um, the other thing I notice is similar. Uh, and I, I can think of a conversation I had with somebody who they really aligned with our vision and were so connected to what we were doing all over the world and really like aligned with that, valued that. But they said, hey, we're, we're actually going to move on to another church because we, we just couldn't make friends here. Mm -hmm. And it's like re a really simple thing. And it doesn't sound super spiritual, but I think it really is because we're made for relationships with other people. And I, when I think about that, I think it's tied in because none of us can do any of this on our own. Mm -hmm. And so we need each other. But it's like, man, this thing will really, this community, this church will really take off when we're all finding easy, clear paths to, to use the gifts that God's given us. And we're all on the same page doing that together. And it, you know, I, I, when I think about the spaces that are the most creative, um, or really well designed, they talk about this idea of like, there are a thousand no's for every single yes. And I think that's part of it is like getting enough clarity to know like, Hey, we actually have to say yes to this and this is where we're going. So there's also that sense of like, hey, if we're gonna set out on this path, did we pick? Did we pick a good one? Did we? Did we do it right? <laughs> oh, you know. For sure. um, so there, there's a little tension there for me. But um, I mean, when I hear you two talk, it, I'm reminded of we have a set of staff values that uh, we go over. Um, and the one that we've been harping at the most, it's one that's called being a guide. Yeah. Um, and 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 what we're trying to say around that it connects to this stories and this plan. Um, it's the intentionality piece. So like that staff value goes like something around like we're not called to be the heroes of the stories. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're called to invite people, to guide people, to help people discern, to shepherd people in their journey. So in, in a way, as we seek to, I don't know if the word is alleviate these tensions, uh, to navigate through through them. Um, it's this idea of like, how can we take this resources that we've been entrusted to be really intentional in helping, supporting, shepherding to the value of guiding people. Mm -hmm. um, so that in a way, putting together a lot of what we said, um, it's taking like a lot of the context and knowledge from the years, 25 years now, um, taking a pause because COVID kind of brought it and because we were intentional on seeking out um, ideas on this process called appreciative inquiry. And at the core of that is like, how can we be more intentional and supporting shepherding and being good guides for people. So as we go through this plan, or as we put it together, as we kind of like give you an overview in this, in this conversation here, that's at the core. How mm -hmm. can we be better guides? How can we create more space for more people to be more guides and to be others to be guided along the way? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we sit down and talk to people in the community, I'm always impressed. Like, these people are so smart yeah. Yeah. and so kind and so compassionate. And yeah, it's just like that of like, how do, how do we make more room for people to just rise up and flourish and do things that God is already speaking into their lives. So, and I, I do think what we've created actually creates some direction and momentum there. Mm -hmm. And we came up with five, five things, right? And we called them five drivers. So I, that's kind of like a buzzword. Like, you know, I would love for us to make sure if, hey, we're having a conversation about this, people know what that is. So um, Alexander, I may actually kick it to you and say, hey, when you hear us talk about driver, if you had to explain that to somebody else, how would you explain what, what is a driver? What do we mean? Um, I think for me, it means a goal that we're putting our time, our energy and resources towards that we think will exponentially increase kind of where we're hoping to go. It's one of the things that's moving us better in the direction that we want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Would you add anything to that? Or I would add that uh, in, 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 
as we work on them, uh, there is a correlation um, in all the components in there. Like you can't have one without the other kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like you need to like we we need to be intentional on on all of those and like drive push kind of like on them almost kind of like I'm not gonna say at the same time or with same level of energy, but like the. You have to consider all of them in the work that we're doing because mm -hmm. if we do one of them and the other isn't taking it like it's it's going to be the whole effort is going to be worthless. Yeah, yeah. So it might be helpful to actually take some time and like explain what the drivers are, uh, and we could do this quickly. So Alexander, I may let you read each of the drivers, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll have somebody explain. But let's start with driver one. Okay. Tell us what that is. Driver number one is a healthy community of ministry leaders. To, and so kind of the definition or phrase around that is to nurture a community of non-staff leaders, people who have clear ownership roles and can expand and enhance Ecclesia's ability to be good guides, as well as care and serve well across all areas of the church. Yeah. So tell me about why you personally are excited about that being a driver for us. I think you said it really well. Like we have so many amazing people here at Ecclesia, and I'm a big believer that we can't do stuff on our own. And I think it also goes back to being good guides. I think that's something that I'm passionate about that our staff can do well, is that a part of our job isn't to necessarily do everything with excellence, but to find and equip and help people step into roles that we can then be good guides of. Um, I think Eric on our staff has a question or a question. He's like, who are you bringing with you? Yeah. And I think that's a really central question to this um, particular driver is as staff, our jobs is to bring people along. And so who is it that we're bringing along who can have, um, who can care well for people in our community? Cause there's only so much that our staff can do and our community is growing. And so how can we care well for our community? I think it's caring well for leaders who are also caring well for our community. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that. a shift in culture for us. Totally, mm -hmm. that's yeah. a shift in our culture and our staff culture because th this is a, a, speaking of the word tension. Um, if you've been on a church staff, maybe it relates. You feel like you're a professional at the thing and you're paid for it. Therefore, you need to carry the load. And in shepherding people mm, mm, doesn't mean like giving people stuff to do, but um, but that that doesn't fully play out that well. So one of the things we're trying to embrace through this um, through this driver. One, capacity, like more people can do more things. But beyond that, it's the core responsibility of embracing being being good guides, uh, which means inviting people into their journey, into their story. And for a lot of people, that means serving, that means leading groups, that means doing this and that. And if the staff falls into the trap of thinking that because they're paid, they're the one that have to do it all, then we're limiting what God can do in those people's life. And we're limiting the potential of us as a community um, because there's just, just, just how much we're we going to be able to do with the set of staff that we have. Yeah. So, yeah, that's like, that's why we are committed to that driver. And that's why that driver is number one. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's intimately connected to like you've talked about, hey, these these aren't in isolation. I think this one is intimately connected to driver two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which I'll let you uh, read that for us. Yeah. And then I'll maybe I'll take a stab at like unpacking why I'm excited about it. Um, driver two is holistic spiritual formation programming. And that's to support increased capacity and clarified pathways focused on holistic spiritual growth aimed at strengthening individuals connections with God themselves and others following the ways of Jesus. Yeah. So, and part of why I'm super excited about this one is this goes back to Matthew 28 and the great commission for me of mm -hmm. Jesus looking at a group of people and saying, go make disciples and baptize them in my name, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. That it's really about how do you bring other people along and invite them into something really beautiful, really meaningful that has totally changed their life. It's like basically saying, hey, just go spread that with other people. And so this is absolutely an invitation. Sorry about the alarm. <clears throat> this is absolutely an invitation to for people to like adapt a totally new way of life and a totally new way of being. And what I think is actually most fully human. Mm -hmm. So like I get fired up thinking that, hey, this is connected to that first driver of like raising up leaders. 
because like God has given us with so much immense capacity and there's so many people in our community that like there's something uniquely that they see or something uniquely they can do and just allowing them, giving them the courage and, and ability to do that. But I also look at it as how do we make this so that you don't just hit a point, a point in your walk with Jesus that like it just feels stagnant, mm -hmm. that there is so much depth to being a follower of Jesus and being in a really healthy, thriving community that like, how do we begin to unlock some of that too? And so I'm excited that these two things are really gonna go together. And I know we've got people in our community that are excited about, yeah, I wanna talk about the depths and I wanna, <laughs> like, I wanna live and swim there. And like, I would love to see them uh, take on more of a role in helping people like walk into that, so. I, I think the challenge that we, like why we kind of landed on on this that may feel like has some ambiguous words and like, what do you even mean? Um, I feel like when I came to Ecclesia um, 12 years ago, um, we had very clear invitation to join a small group, mm -hmm. which um, works for some people, for some people doesn't necessarily work. And then the other clear invitation, come and serve on Sundays at Simple Fees with our own house brothers and sisters. So like, you have like two ways in which you could kind of plug in. And for a lot of people, maybe that works. You could argue the landscape has shifted, worlds have shifted, and you can make a lot of arguments. What we've noticed is like in this season and time, um, we could we could be more intentional, going back to that word, and can we create more opportunities for connections? Can we create more opportunities for people to dive in um, that are beyond like the small groups, which we will have and we we don't invite people into, but that might not be the season where people are at, mm -hmm. um, either to participate in one or leading one. And they might not be in a season where like serving at Simple Fees or with Nostoy or at the barbecue might be at. So um, how can we create more of those avenues or opportunities, whatever the word might be? Um, because, um, yeah, because we're in different seasons of life, then we have different needs. So like, can we, we don't, we're not going to be Baskin Robbins and have like a plethora, like that's, that's hard to do. But can we be a little bit more intentional on creating spaces? I'll, I'll give an example. When I, when I came in, um, I did a round table with small group leaders and the stories that you would hear, their narrative, they were so different, like how they would do small group. But at the end of the day, the, the, the story sort of the ethos at the core felt very similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hospitality, God at work, through caring, through them, even though some of them felt like chaotic as they would describe it because they had a lot of kids in the room and they had to figure out a way. Others felt like Bible studies and other felt like they were serving together in different frequencies. Um, but at the core, they all came back to celebrating the same things. Mm -hmm. So I think we put the hat on, it's like, what, what are the components there that are similar? And can we be a little bit more intentional in trying to create more spaces that feel like the, they could have similar stories at the end of the day? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if I yeah. made a good explanation out of that. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I, it, to me, it also speaks to, like, the more clear we are about where we're headed, mm -hmm. the easier it is for somebody to, to do that. And like, it, uh, how do we do this and create it so that it allows people to be creative, uh, to allows people to figure out like, how has God made me and how can I actually achieve that end result? Um, so the more clear that is, the easier it is to see where you fit in it. So, so can we name some examples of that? Like, what does that look like? Or some of the things that we've done over the last, so can we give some examples of that? Like, what are some of the things that we've done over the past season that fit into this idea of providing other opportunities for the, for the community to connect, learn, participate, and grow together? What are some of the ones that we can name, like, as highlights? I mean, one of the ones that I love and have gotten to participate in over the years are a lot of the contemplative spaces. And so that's definitely a particular way of connecting with God, of connecting with community, of having that in your own life, whether that's silent retreats, engaging with like Lectio Divina, sitting with scripture slowly, Visio Divina, examine all these kind of ancient Christian practices that are more slow and contemplative. And so like you said, like maybe small groups and serving at Simple Feast isn't for everyone, right. maybe sitting slowly and in silence isn't for everyone, but it is for some people. And so I think that's one particular group of opportunities that we've had that we're going to continue to have to meet that particular spiritual need of people. Can you elaborate on one of those groups, Be Still? Because I think it encompasses a lot of what we're trying to, and like 
can you even name like the components? Like this came together this way. Here are the components. Here why we feel like that fits fully into that driver yeah. of yeah. that Wayne just mentioned. Yeah, I think it started, I don't know, about three years ago during COVID and it was just Mitzi and then she asked me to do tech support and then I kind of stepped in and she was leading um, practices for half an hour on Zoom that people could come to and then a community member were like, hey, if any community members want to join us in leading this, you can. One person did and then slowly more people did and then Mitzi stopped leading and then I was leading more and then we had three, four, five, six community members and then this last year I took a step entirely back and so all of 2023 it was entirely community led by amazing women who were taking turns in guiding the community in contemplative practices and so I think moving into 2024 it's now going to be in person at our downtown campus. And so it's, it's really beautiful to see it evolve over the years and how, um, each time somebody new kind of stepped in and it changed. And so I think that that's also a part of kind of what you're saying of, we want there to be enough room and space for the gifts and, um, passions of a community leaders and members to make these spaces of connecting with God and connecting with other people make sense for that particular season. Yeah. I think too, of even just the last sermon series where we also invited leaders to start groups. Um, and like, it was a short term thing. Uh, Hey, would you do this for four weeks? But the way that, I mean, you were huge and instrumental in getting all this set up. And then obviously our story team and Sean and some several others in resourcing the people, but to hand some people, here's a guide, here's some like questions. Here's some thoughts on how can you, uh, make connections with people in there. Here's some ways to get the conversation rolling. And here's some video, like some content that makes that really easy for you. Uh, but then to watch, um, lots of people come together on a Sunday when they're already here and start to build relationships and like talk about something really meaningful and impactful of like, Hey, what does it look like for us to read the Bible and do that? Well, uh, that we're hoping and are excited that, Hey, that turns into like, we actually dive into this a little bit more and we read a little bit more. So I, that's one. I have another thought too, of something we did. Uh, and I think it actually may be a good segue to driver three too, which we'll go to in a second. But, um, I'm really proud of the work our family team did to pull together a parent round table, uh, where they, found parents in the community too, to be kind of on a panel and answer some questions about, Hey, what does it look like to, to create a faith that lasts in your kids? And then also to create spaces where we just sat around tables as parents and talked about things of like, Hey, what's going on and how do we apply this? And some of them are beautiful things where there were actually like almost like some niche tables. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of them, you know, for, for Emily and I, we've got Moses who's on the autism spectrum. So to just have a space to connect with other parents who have neurodivergent kids or kids like with just special needs, there wasn't a whole lot of content done there, but it was literally just a connection and Mm -hmm. to see somebody else in the community and know like, okay, I'm not the only one Mm -hmm. who has like these kinds of questions or these kinds of struggles is, was huge. So uh, really proud of the work our family team did to to pull that together and elevated some voices in the community to do it too. So, mm-hmm. and that's a beautiful segue to driver three. So tell us what driver three is. And then I'm like, you're always passionate about that. So Ramona, mm-hmm. you're going to answer that one. So um, driver three, child friendly environments and to create and host welcoming environments for children and their families that contribute to connections and spiritual formation mitigating potential challenges that some may face when participating with children. Yeah, you're, you're, I mean, I have two kids, so a 13 year old and a nine year old. So like now you start thinking about their spiritual journey and I come from a church background. I think a lot of people in the Ecclesia community, I've heard this story a lot as well. Like you value the things that kind of brought you here. But you don't necessarily want to do the copy and paste. So you're trying to figure out sure. what is what is what is my kid's journey? And mm-hmm. that's one element in there. Then you're trying to create all these opportunities for people to connect that we just talked about. And then you're hit with the realization because like some of us are going through it. A lot of us are commuting, commuting to like our campuses and like life is happening, working parents, kids have schools, kids, they have sports and you're trying to figure out a way and like, how do you, how do you create opportunities that families can participate in, can belong to, uh, 
together, but also kind of like individually. So we put on the, like we put on the table, like what does it mean for us to be even more intentional or going beyond creating a hospitable environment for families to feel comfortable? Because I, I feel, I think we feel like we do that pretty well. A great example of that that we kind of pride ourselves on is like, if your kid is crying in the venue, we're okay with that. Um, yeah. You don't have to go anywhere. The parent is the one who feels the most pressure in having to leave. But as a community, we're gonna ha- we're we're gonna we're gonna be fine with it because yeah. that is life. Um, so I think we hold that ethos really well. But then we get to hear from people where like, I don't know if I can come to that event if there's not childcare, just to provide a random example. Yeah. Or like, I don't know how to do small group if we have like five children. Mm-hmm. So brings about the question, how could we be more intentional on creating opportunities for families with young children? And we've called it like, how can we be more intentional of child, child-friendly uh, environments that could lead towards families being able to participate, belong, commit to, and that our our kids are well invited into their own spiritual journey story and we can partner well as a church staff and as families and parents uh, on everything that I just said. Yeah, and I I love it. It really kind of, a lot of context I hear people talk about kids and they talk about them as like, oh, they're the church of the future. And I like, I don't want to discount that. But I love that we want to talk about it in a way that says, no, the the kids are actually the church now too. Mm -hmm. And they're here. And I think of stories where uh, somebody has come to us and said, hey, we're actually stepping into foster care or adoption because our daughter is the one who came home and said, I think God is telling us to do this. Mm -hmm. And so like, I want to create spaces where more of those kinds of things can happen. And we allow even room for our kids to guide us into some things Mm -hmm. that are really beautiful and meaningful as well. And then who knows where that goes 10, 20 years from now. Absolutely. Like we, I would love to hand kids and teenagers like a plethora of resources and like just an amazing foundation from which to just launch and, and go and do amazing things in the world with. So, yeah. Yeah. Maybe let's talk a little bit about Driver Four. Tell us about that. And then, yeah. Driver Four is guest belonging. That's to kindle curiosity and foster engagement among newcomers with exceptional hospitality, with in person and digital initiatives that lead to meaningful interactions paving the way for deeper relationships and spiritual growth. Yeah. I think I want to hear from both of you on this. So I may actually ask you first, like, why are you excited about Driver Four? Yeah, I'm excited about Driver 4 because I, I'm i at the Connect table like every week. <laughs> and I think when people are new or just like curious about Ecclesia, that's one of the places that I get to first interact with them. And so many of the conversations, they're like, hey, this is my first Sunday. This is my second Sunday. Um, and I, I want us to we do some things really well already in that space, but other things like I think having a clear pathway of like how people can see themselves right away in this community um, is something that I'm really passionate about. I think it's your story. Your, the story that you said about someone saying like, I like a lot, like I like being here. I like the ethos. Of the, it's just hard to, to connect. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of one. Mm-hmm. Um, also, because we... We've been at this downtown location for a long time, and then we were entrusted and gifted this Memorial Drive property, and then we were gifted this uh, this place at the Lindale community. And in a way, we were asking ourselves the question of like, who is in proximity? Mm-hmm. Um, because if they are in proximity, may, may, maybe we should have a response to it in a in any way, shape, or form. Someone was telling me. In, Pardon me if I'm going off the rails here in my theology, but it's kind of like going to another parable of like the Good Samaritans. Like he he found someone in the way. There was someone in proximity, which which was an invitation them uh, for the Good Samaritan to like do do a something, he, like, which meant doing a part of the thing. Yeah. So in a way, I feel it's just, it's us asking ourselves like who is in proximity to us and like what is our response. Going back to the work, how can we be intentional in responding to that? And and I'll give an example of like when when this goes really really right or when it looks beautiful. Here's here's the stories that we've been we've been sharing here on staff. Um, 
there was like we we did a snow day at the west side um which was kind of like impromptu because it's hard to coordinate a day off with a cold front and that we had snow on a credit because we couldn't use it on christmas, christmas eve, eve yeah. so like stars have to put like a line in a, we we decided like what if we put snow and try to meet neighbors at the at the west side campus and long story short it was a beautiful thing that the community showed up to um and i mean just just creating space for the community to connect we have stories we could tell stories around the lindale campus and how some of the programming that it's happening there it's figuring out a way into which build trust and relationships with the community Um, because we believe that's good for the soul because right. we believe that the, the, the relationship that built from there uh, will be good. So, yeah, pretty excited on being intentional about the ways in which we host and we create space for good hospitality. Does yeah. that make sense? It does. And I love that too because to me, like, I see driver four intimately connected to driver two in particular. Mm -hmm. And even the way that, like, the way they must have understood the great commission whenever Jesus gave it to them of like, go make disciples. Right. And so often when I hear like that shared in like Christian and especially evangelical context, then it's like, Oh no, this is like the call to evangelism to go like out and witness and like do all this. But it's like, no, 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 no. Like he didn't actually say go evangelize. He said, go make disciples. Yeah. And so like, I love it that it's like, we're going to do some things that invite like, wherever you are in your faith journey, you can come and you can participate and you can belong and you can be a part of what God's doing and you can be a part of the mission. And like, yeah, we'll have some clear pathways along the way that if you want to explore more of what does it look like to, to get into Lectio Divina or like explore the scriptures or what does it look like to serve, but you don't have to have this all figured out to jump in. And so um, I love that idea of like, hey, how can we be even better about who's around us and how can we make that more inviting and welcoming wherever somebody is in their faith journey to it, not knowing where that may go from there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. We've almost made it. Last one. Driver number five. Tell us what that is. <clears throat> uh, driver number five is giver engagement to encourage increased engagement from our community by inviting more individuals to actively participate in supporting the work of the church through regular giving. Yeah. So like in part of why I'm excited about this is, this is so central to what it means to be human. And it's so central to what Jesus invites and what God embodies for us. And I mean, it's all over the place of like, you know, God gave us Jesus, you know, God gave us him God, himself, right? Like God, God didn't even hold himself back. And so much of the invitation to Abraham and others is like, I have given you this and I'm going to bless you, not so that you can hold it, but so that you can be a blessing. And so, Um, it's not something that's widely practiced in our culture. And like, you can see, um, data that says like giving and generosity and things are shifting and going down. Uh, but how do we invite people into something that is actually really good for us? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think I see a lot of this too, is like, Hey, how do we become really trustworthy? You know, mm -hmm. um, how do we, and it's, it's the question, it's the tension we're wrestling with of like, Hey, what do we do with these resources we've been given? But, um, you know, we've never been, it's, it's always been very laissez faire of like, yeah, you can give if you want, you know, like, um, and there's some health in that. Like, I don't want somebody to feel like they have to, you know, they're not buying their ticket to be at Ecclesia, you know, but I do think there's something to, this is actually healthy and good. It's a part of what it means to be grateful. It's a part of what it means to be generous. And so how do we make that more clear and accessible and, uh, just easier for people to participate in that way. So curious if you two have thoughts on that too. Yeah, I think, uh, I feel attention with this. I think it's probably also like asking people to serve. Like I ask people every Sunday, like, Hey, do you want to serve communion? But if you don't want to, that's okay. <laughs> um, I feel like it's like, like you said, it's kind of a shift in our staff culture of like, how do we be really intentional about giving people opportunities to use their gifts? And if they don't want to, that's okay. But also like, if we don't ask then maybe people won't think to do that. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's a similar shift, maybe even personally or just on our staff to be like asking, asking people yeah. and inviting people into this. I know Mitzi uses this language a lot, um, the spiritual practice of giving. Yeah. And like there's many different spiritual practices and this is one of them is how do we become more and more like Jesus and Jesus was generous. And so how do we 
become more like Jesus in this aspect of our life. I keep going back to the intentionality word or comment. So um, if if we got better at providing opportunities for people, it, it's, it's a two-way street. Like I wholeheartedly believe it'll be better for the individual to engage in the practice and it'll be better for the mission that we are trying to accomplished together so it's 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 as much about the spiritual journey of an individual as about adding capacity to the things that we could do as a community of faith so um, there's some practical things that we could do from like the storytelling from the reporting structure to like yeah creating awareness of the invitation that it's out there um, for us as christians so yeah i'm i'm, I'm excited on, on being thoughtful and intentional on, on an invitation to that one as with every other driver yeah. uh, acknowledging the tension that it creates is like are we going to talk about money because yeah. like that <laughs> yeah. turns some people off yeah. and we're believing that there's there's a way in that in which that can be uh, yeah. that invitation can be put out there in a very respectful manner yeah. uh, and in, intentional and respectful yeah yeah. And I think what you shared about storytelling, that's one thing that excites me and that I've, I think we've tried to be intentional as a staff kind of up until this point in, in sharing more of those stories with the community of the impact mm -hmm. of our resources. Um, cause this is, this is specifically about money, but also like our time and our talents totally. and sharing stories and photos during the offertory time. Like a, that's one, one way that we're wanting to share stories with the community to be like, this isn't just a one way street, but it's, we want to be in relationship with you in ways that we know that our impact is, we want to tell you how, how you're impacting the community, whether that's Lindale, whether that's people in Ecclesia, whether that's around the world, um, that stories are a really key part of that. So to maybe try to help us like wrap up the conversation, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of have two questions to kind of maybe uh, help us wrap up. So first would be, what are some things that you hope to see come from this strategic report? What are some of the things that you would love to see happen? You know, whether that's a year from now, or even if you can even think further out, like five years from now, what do you hope to see happen? I, I'm most excited about uh, people being able to see how they fit and belong in community. And so I think that can be, this is how I connect with people, whether that's like, I'm in a small group every week. Like mm -hmm. that's where I see my spiritual growth happening. That's where my family's thriving. Like I would love to see that. Or people um, with kind of the leadership driver of taking ownership of something. I would love to hear people saying every, every Sunday or like once a month, I do this and I help other people in the community also do this. Yeah. I think people taking ownership and finding like a deep sense of belonging um, for the community and connections that's here. I, I would love to hear more of those stories than stories of, I know this one staff person and that's it. Yeah. And I think that's what really excites me about what we're trying to put our energy behind is how can we help people find more connection and to have more ownership in the community that's forming here. Yeah, I love that. I mean, at the core, it's the same answer. I mean, it's built in the question, how can we be better guides? Um, mm -hmm. Which it's for me, it's too, it's a parallel or two dimension kind of thing. Uh, I'll go to the broader one, I mean, talking about organizationally, kind of like my role, kind of how I'm wired. Like, if we expand our capacity, going back to the parable, the talents, like, it feel like, I feel like, yeah, if we've been entrusted this, how do we multiply it? Like, how do we expand our footprint? Not for the sake of conquering anything. It's just because I feel like when you have something good that you've witnessed, like, I feel like you're, in, like, you want to share mm -hmm. that. And, and I think... A lot of us, if not all of us, have come to this community because of uniqueness and some of the elements that like like the hospitality, the diversity and all of that, um, that I would hope through this plan, like I keep using this this um, illustration. That I don't know if it's like spot on, but like I feel like there's good soil and like if I think greenhouse, like it like. Yeah, let it organically grow. But what if we know like the lighting is coming this way and we can articulate? What if we know that the water is needed and we can actually put like some hoses in there that beyond like the rain that comes in 
to the intentionality piece, like I would hope, like yes, five years from now, whenever the the, the time may be, that we have those stories that Alexandra is, mm-hmm. is is talking about. We have more and more of them locally and globally, because it it all came together and we were able to expand our capacity because we believe that the mission and we who we are called to be and what ha- God has called us to do, it's so meaningful, it's so important uh, that we were intentional on it and. We got a lot of those stories. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, so if somebody's listened to this whole conversation and they're actually here at the end and like <laughs> they're still here, right? Yeah, like can, can, you should get a medal or something. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, like what what is there for this somebody to do? Like what, what would we hope for them to do? Um, and any thoughts around that? So I, I think they, they would see this as a, an invitation. In a way, like, I don't know if we're breaking the fourth wall by telling people, <laughs> like, <laughs> that resource, it's part of the plan. That yeah. invitation for you to lead, it's part of a plan. Like, it's, a, yeah, this is like, this is what the thought process has been. This is what's been in our hearts. Um, so um, the invitation would be, like, it would be an invitation. My response or my hope would be that you see this as an invitation mm-hmm. for you to consider, like, what it's doing in there. Yeah. Um, this is what we believe, like, we've been invited to do as a community. And we think a lot of that, it's going to land on people inviting the Holy Spirit, inviting God into, like, their own specific and, like, yeah, part leg of the journey. And like that looks different for different people because we're in different seasons of life and all that. So at the end of the day, I, I think our hope would be that this uh, inspires into a like, what is God inviting me into all that? Because if you've laid a foot in here, like you've taken a step of faith, seeing this as your community of faith, I think it's an invitation to respond to God's calling in your life mm-hmm. individually and communally. So as you hear and navigate through all of this, like, what is my part in this? I would hope people would. And some people might be ready to say like, oh, I got some ideas in some of those. Totally. And we love to sit down. Like, and anybody that would want to read through this whole thing because they made it. I'm all in for like going over it and sharing like some of the documentation and all of that. So my hope is that it inspires people to ask like, what is God inviting me? What do I play in this? Being that this is the community of faith that you decided to walk in this season of life. Do you have any yeah, thoughts? I mean, that's a great question. <laughs> what is God inviting me? Yeah. What is God inviting me into? And I think kind of the extension of that question would be like, and who can I bring with me? Mm-hmm. Um, Cause it's not just us being guys, but it's also how can we equip the community and leaders to also be guides to start asking that question of like asking God, who can I bring with me as I'm figuring this out? And who can I bring with me as I'm saying yes to this? Yeah. And I, like, I love even, and this goes to Jeremy. I love like, as we were even setting up, like, Hey, sometimes like we overthink this and sometimes the invite can be as simple as, Hey, just, you can pray like, Mm -hmm. and pray for some of the things you're talking about. Like pray that God would uh, like speak, that God would reveal what is it that like I'm being invited into. And I think similarly, like asking God, who are you putting in my path? Like, Mm -hmm. Who can I bring along? Um, I would I would love it if we had a whole crew of people uh, asking those kinds of questions. So I have one more. Yeah, go for it. I think learning people's names. Yeah, feels really simple. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes it's easy to walk in on a Sunday, Saturday, and just be like, yeah, I don't know many of these people. And so I think another invitation is just like meet some more people. Yeah, introduce, learn somebody's name. I feel like that's a really simple place to start in all of this and it doesn't work if we don't know who each other are yeah and it, that feels very similar to me of like be the change you wish to see in the world you know like we could all complain about like oh nobody knows each other here but it's like well i could actually get to know one person you know yeah. and that's a little different i love that um well i get fired up talking about this stuff i feel yeah. like we could talk about it all day yeah. um but yeah, i just want to pause and say thank you um mm. for both being in the room and in the conversation and also for the immense amount of work behind the scenes that no one uh was a part to and how many times we were in that room over there and draw it on the whiteboard and you know all the sticky notes and all the things that yeah. went into this but there was a lot of prayer and a lot of effort and uh, both of you brought your voices and gifts in really beautiful ways to help shape this. And so yeah, right I just want to you. say thank yeah. you um, for that. So, yeah, it's fun. We should yeah. do this again yeah. sometime. That's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, that's a wrap. See ya. <laughs> Click on the subscribe button. Yeah. Wow. <laughs>